Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. You're watching Get Your Sax Together, and on this video, you're gonna learn the most basic rules of phrasing that you should know before you play any song. Just before we get into these basic rules, don't forget you can get a PDF for this lesson, which has got all the examples I'm gonna play for you with the exact tonguing and phrasing marked in, which is a super useful resource, which you can use to copy and learn when you play other songs. So make sure you just use the URL there or click the link in the description. Also, don't forget you can grab my free saxophone success masterclass using the link you can see there or click the link in the description. It's a one hour free gift to you with loads of awesome teaching which could transform your saxophone play straight away. Okay, without further ado, let's look at these basic rules of phrasing. First of all, why is phrasing important? Well, this is one of the biggest differences apart from sound <laughs> and timing, which are obviously two very, very important factors for playing saxophone. But after that, this is the most important factor that makes the biggest difference between a pro player and a jobbing amateur player, let's call it, like a sax enthusiast, <laughs> let's just call them. Phrasing is the thing that makes the biggest difference. Now, I can make this extremely simple for you, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Here it is. A note can either be long or it can be short. And as a general rule to start with, I would encourage you to either make a note long or make it short. Now, when I say make the note long, I mean the full value of the note. So if you've got a quarter note or a crotchet, you play that for the full length. Whereas if you're playing a short note, you're still playing the quarter note, but you're gonna put your tongue back on the reed and you're gonna stop the note. Now I'm gonna demonstrate all this stuff after I've given you the basic rules. So you've got a long note where you just play it full length, or you've got a short note where you play that note and then you get your tongue straight back in the reed and stop the sound, giving you that dip, that really short. So to begin with, don't go middle ground, okay? I call it polarized phrasing, play a note full length or play it short. So that's the two types of notes. And then the only other thing you've got is how the notes join up with each other. Now, if something is slurred, or legato, or smooth, they all mean the same thing. You tongue the first note, and then you just move your fingers, and you don't re-articulate the next series of notes. This only works if you're changing note. If you're on the same note, obviously you have to articulate it again. Why? Because otherwise you just have a long note. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Remember, we've got long and short notes, and then the way that the notes flow into each other can either be slurred, or, if you've got a long and a short, you can do it two different ways. The first way is to tongue the first note and to tongue the second note and make it short. Da, da. Okay, so tongue, tongue, and then get your tongue straight back in the reed to make the second note short. Or the other way you can play a long short is to play, to, to tongue the first note, ta, and you slur to the second note, but immediately put your tongue back on the reed to give you the short note. So in other words, if I was singing it, it would be more like the first one would be ta ta and the second one would be ta Okay, they're the two different ways of doing a long short. Now with those simple rules, which are make a note long or short and then slur it, or if you've got a long short, either tongue both or tongue the first one and then just make the second one short. With those simple rules, you can play any song, jazz, pop, soul, funk, you name it, and you can make it sound really good. So let's have a little demonstration of these basic principles. It doesn't matter what note you play, I'm just gonna play any old note. So first of all, a note is either long or short. Well, that's easy. I'm gonna play four long notes and then four short notes. Now remember, on the short notes, you tongue the note, and then as quickly as you can, you get your tongue back on the reed to stop the sound and make the note short. Here we go, here's four long notes and four short notes. Just before I play it, remember this, when I say long notes, I don't mean note value. I do not mean note value. If you're playing, I'm gonna play eight quarter notes in a row and they're all gonna be exactly on the grid of quarter notes. It's just that some are gonna be played full length, some are gonna be played short. And this is how you can interpret written music. You can't interpret the rhythms. You gotta play the rhythms, but you can interpret how long each note is on that grid. Okay, here we go.
Okay, that was four long notes and four short notes. Now I'm going to demonstrate slurring. So I'm just going to tongue the first note and then slur all the other notes in the phrase. Simples. <laughs> but many people, when they're slurring, feel like they have to accent each note with a diaphragm kind of puff, like a... <laughs> like a <laughs> When you're playing legato, you just blow smoothly, and the only thing that you do is move your fingers. Okay, so don't 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 do little mini surges like this. That is a very fast track to sounding dreadful when you play any song. Okay, so nice and smooth, one continuous contraction of your stomach muscles without pulses for each note. Very important. Okay, you've got to separate the breath from your finger movement. Right, now let's demonstrate doing a long short the two different ways. So first long short, I'm gonna tongue the first note and tongue the second note, and then get my tongue back on to make it short. So it's gonna be ta ta. Now I'll do it the other way, which is uh, now, the other way, you, I forgot to mention, the other way you can only do when you change note, but obviously, because if you've got the same note, which is a long short, you have to articulate the second note. So if you're changing note, if you're changing note, you can do this second method, which is tongue the first note, slur to the second note, and quickly stop it dead. Da! And I'll just play the other method one more time so you can hear the difference. So hopefully you can hear that the one where you tongue both notes is that little bit more crisp. Okay, so that's just the difference between, between the two things. Right, now on to some practical demonstrations. I've chosen three very simple songs to give you an illustration of how these very elementary rules can be strung together to make your song sound fantastic. So before you play any song, have a think about the rules that we've just learned. Now the first song is a funk classic by Herbie Hancock called Chameleon. So I'm going to play it first and then I'm going to play it very slowly. Now on the screen you'll see that there's a T at the beginning, at, above the note, if it's tongued. There'll be a line over it if it's slurred, okay? And then the way that you write long sh long and shorts in music is that uh, above the note, or below the note, but I like it above the note, you have a long line if, uh, it's called a tenuto, a long line if the note is long, and you have a dot if the note is short. It's like Morse code. Do, 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 do. It's all dots and dashes, so a dot means short, and uh, tenuto, a line, a, vertical, a horizontal line, means to play it long. Now, it's a little bit tricky to notate the exact ins and outs of if you're doing a long short. If I've got a long short, I'm going to write on the music long, short, with a dot, so just line, dot. But if I'm slurring into it, I would do a slur with a dot on the second note. So that's my little notation convention but as you'll soon learn when you're reading music everyone has a different idea of how to write this stuff so it's really can be quite triggering let's start with chameleon here we go now i'll play that in real slow motion so you can see exactly what i was doing So as you can see in the screen, you can see exactly where I'm tonguing and which variety of long short it is. Now, of course, if you can play it with fantastic rhythm, like I mentioned earlier, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? But the phrasing is going to make a huge difference to how well you play each song. 
Let's now move on to a famous Beatles number just to show you that we can use this in any genre. I'm going to play When I'm 64 by the Beatles. Just the first little bit to give you the idea. Here we go. Now I'll do that more slowly to show you exactly what I was doing. Now, finally, I'm going to do something a little bit more advanced. It's a contemporary song. It's called Easy On Me by Adele. I'm sure you know it. And this is just to demonstrate how you try and copy a vocalist, okay? Instead of just a set melody, vocalists do things a little bit different. So this is a little bit more advanced, but it still uses the same basic rules. So here's Easy On Me by Adele. And now I'm going to play that nice and slowly so you can hear exactly what was going on with the phrasing. Here we go. So you can see that one is a little bit more complicated uh, because vocalists tend to do more little bits of decoration when they sing a song, especially a singer like this, like the uh, like this Adele song. Now, don't forget, you can get the PDF, which has got these three examples written out with all the phrasing marked in exactly for alto and tenor, of course. And uh, just click the link you can see there or use the link in the description. So... Is there more to the story than this? Yes, of course there is. There's always more to the story. There's bends, there's vibrato, there's having a great sound, there's having great timing. But today I'm just teaching you the basic principles of longs and shorts and phrasing. And if you apply them, you're already going to make 100, 200, 300 percent improvement in how good you sound when you perform any song. So that's all we've got time for this week. I really hope you've learned something super valuable. If you apply these very simple rules of phrasing, you will see a massive improvement in how good your songs sound when you play them in any genre. Remember, you can get the PDF, which has got all these examples written out, super useful for alto and tenor, of course, with the note names written underneath in case you don't read music. And of course, you can get my free saxophone success masterclass as always. Next week, there'll be more fantastic content and there will be more fantastic content throughout the whole of this year. So you've got a lot to look forward to. So stick with me, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've got the bell clicked to be notified when I upload new videos which for your information is every single Sunday at 7 a.m. UK time without fail. Never missed a Sunday. Sax up your Sunday, baby. <laughs> All right. Until next week, then practice hard, practice smart and enjoy your music. See you later. Which is, what is it called? Go easy on... So that's all we got time for. I can't believe my phone went off. So amateur.